I was searching intuitively for the dance of Isidore Duncan. I, I never saw anyone who had performed it before. I saw the one movie that she did and I read her book, My Life. So uh, I said, uh, I just have to find it because it, it expressed what, you know, my, my soul in, in, in movement, you know, based on the works of art that I studied in Florence. And so uh, I was searching all over for her, and then I w went to Paris, and I went to her brother's gallery, Raymond Duncan Gallery on Rue de Seine. And there sat her, uh, uh, her great-granddaughter, and uh, she told me, she says, well, the, the most astute person that you can learn the dance from was Maria Theresa, the last of the six is adorables. And uh, you can find her in New York at the Y. So I went there, and then well, that's when I first saw her per perform. I went to a performance, and I was just couldn't believe it. I was so moved by her presence. There was a meeting of, of souls, a, a spiritual meeting, and that it was like a family member. And that she, we even people used to ask if she was my mother because we were, resembled each other and we got along so well. And she always said, sometimes you're closer to people, uh, other people, than members in your own family. You refer to her as being one of six is six, adorables. Yes. What does that mean? That, that was the six dancers that Isadora Duncan adopted. Uh, six that that took on her name and then how old was she when nine years old nine years old and Isadora Duncan adopted her yes Isadora came to my hometown the beautiful Baroque city of Dresden she came to one of our simple childlike performances in a white Grecian tunic with a stole wrapped around her body and up over her head like a white angel she told us that she was Isadora Duncan and that she wanted to take me away to her school. And my mother, realizing the beauty of it, said to me, my dear child, do you want to learn to dance like that? And I said softly, yes. She replied, it means you will have to leave me. Two days later, January 5th, 1905, several other others Isadora had collected in a similar fashion, and I went to her hotel. Gordon Craig opened the door and seeing us said, Isadora, your children are here. They had an education in arts and the humanity because yeah. Isadora called it her dance of the future. It's mm. described as both classical dance and modern dance. Which is it? Teresa returned to the word classical because she said it was classical because it talked about the, the cla classical Greek mythology, the classical musicians, mm -hmm. and the classical artists of the Renaissance, Greek, Roman, and Renaissance. But because she was the first woman that broke, the, broke from the ballet and a mm -hmm. new, new form of movement, yeah. they called it modern. Yeah. But uh, Teresa went back and during her career called it the classical dance. Teresa was such a deep and profound and graceful and very wise person. You were in her company and you were lifted up to a, another plane. At mm -hmm. what stage in her career were you introduced? 1979. Now she was old, she was in her 80s. Yeah. So uh, I, I met her in 1979 till 1987. So you, I mean, you were with her for, throughout that period? Yes. And we worked in a very, it took a long time to understand the, her choreography. She created hundreds of pieces, as you see here. And she was going to the studio until she was in 90, mm -hmm. because uh, she worked on her own pieces. I, when I would go to the studio with her, she, she was working on this one, well, she worked on Tchaikovsky and uh, Sibelius. She never stopped it, because she said it was a way of life. It was a way of living. She was the flame in the wind, the living manifestation of beauty and serenity and grace, exalted to a virtually divine order, speaking her own language, yet always gently moving in rhythm to the sound of a higher order, expressing love, humanity, joy, and a greater generosity, inspiring all who were in her presence. She was the way and the light.